hello. How are you all doing? How are you all doing today? I hope that you are all doing very, very well. Hello, Joseph. I'm glad that you're able to listen to this while working. I hope that I do not bore you while you are working, though. I really do. Uh, so today, guys, I wanted to do a really fun kind of like little stream. I found this great article that outlines five of the most famous pyramid schemes as of more recently, I guess, because there's a lot of famous pyramid schemes out there. And they talk about how they got shut down le legally. So basically, they got sued for being pyramid schemes, got shut down. And I thought it would be kind of fun since this month here in Canada, anyway, is actually fraud and scam prevention month. So I was like, let's let's talk about so, some good things. So I did a video within the last week that was about how the MLM industry is failing. And I thought it would be fun if today we talked about some pyramid schemes that have failed. We, we do a lot of talking about the schemes and MLM companies that are still ripping people off to this day. So I, I wanted to... Uh, celebrate a little bit of some that had been, you know, shut down and ended because that's more fun for me. That That's, it's like watching my victories, right? It's like, we could all sit back and go, look it, because of people like me, these things have all been shut down because people spoke out after leaving these things, they, they got sued and shut down. So, uh, please like the video subscribe if you're new. I got to do the whole like YouTuber thing now, I guess. And um, that industry isn't, I'm awful at like stream yard. That industry is inviolable in the long run. The founders make their money and move on to the next scam. And that's usually the case. A lot of the people that start these pyramid schemes, if you look into their history, they've already failed at some scammy business or already another pyramid scheme. So then they go start another one. Uh, my grandparents were actually taken by Enron. Uh, so I, I think that's where I get some of my passion for talking about these things because uh, yeah, they, they lost thousands upon thousands of dollars. And so that's why I like to talk about things like this, uh, because people get really badly ripped off in these. And right now, you know, I want to have a little celebration. I want to talk about some that have been shut down. So again, I found this great article. No, I am not a famous streamer. I am not like the number one streamer of Rhode Island or something. So I'm sorry. But uh, here we have five of famous pyramid scheme companies that ended in legal action. It's a uh, Firmex article and it's going to be our guide right now. Of course, you will see up on the screen since I am just screen sharing that I have looked up all the companies and we're going to kind of go through and talk a little bit more about them because... Yeah, I feel like um, when we don't talk about them in detail, then, all right, good. Sometimes my screen, when I screen share, even if I press the share audio, it likes to like mess up on me for some reason. And I don't know why, uh, but I think I figured it out. So this outlines five of them. And like I said, we're going to kind of dive into it a little bit more because this is very brief. Uh, it, it's a brief article. So it says, you think pyramid scheme companies are a thing of the past. You'd unfortunately be wrong. Just last year, six British women were convicted for their give and take operation, which stole more than 20 million pounds. So 30.5 million in US dollars from 10,000 investors and preyed upon vulnerable women. It's another stark reminder of the tireless schemers out there preying on people's innate desires to get rich quick, which is oftentimes what they promise, either getting rich quick or getting rich in a, I don't want to say like quicker way. It, it seems to be like a lazy is mean too, isn't it? Uh, 
like right now, I feel like the MLMs and a lot of these pyramid schemes are really using things like staying home with your family, spending more time with your family, and also being, being able to have a career. So it's not only about like getting rich quick anymore. Now it's also about being able to get rich while still being on your couch with your family. The problem is, while each scheme has its own creative way of getting you to buy in, the scammers are just reworking an age-old model. Exactly. And is the case with MLMs, is the case with all of these business gurus, even the training ones. It's Sometimes I feel like I'm just going through the same thing over and over again, but it's different people. And I know some people will be like, well, that means it's repetitive, but it it's almost like we have to show how repetitive it is so that people understand it's all the same bullshit. <laughs> it's always tough to discern legitimate franchises from multi-level marketing scams. Where applicants pay business owner buy-in fees then have to purchase the products, materials, and services on top of that, putting the onus on them to make that money back. The gist of the schemes carry a common thread. Recruiting salespeople earns more rewards than selling. And I love it when they put MLMs in the same category as pyramid schemes. Are you sending me? I'm getting a scam email while I'm doing a live stream on YouTube about scams. So uh, this is is good news to me. I've been kind of out here talking about how I think that we need to start putting multi-level marketing in the exact same category as all the other scams and pyramid schemes since they are the same. They're run the same. Uh, and I feel like when you separate them. That's part of the reason why people don't really understand how harmful the MLM industry is. It's because they think it's completely separate and more of a part of the direct sales association, direct selling, which is why I get mad at the DSA for always like taking those companies on. Because I'm like, no, they're not the same thing as direct selling. Stop doing that. And it's about time that we just clump them all together because multi-level marketing, pyramid schemes, scams, all the same. Over the years, pyramid scheme has become a catch-all phrase. A catch-all phrase. I don't know why I couldn't read that. Sorry. For frauds and scams of all sorts. But it's really a particular type of illegal business with a specific structure. They've taken a look at Ponzi schemes and investment scams. We've taken a look at Ponzi schemes. We've taken a look at all different kinds of scams and even like IG verification scams. And we've discussed the people that go around trying to get you to buy subscribers on YouTube as scams. Like I've been accused of using these things and I'm like, yo, sis, I've done videos speaking out about them. What the fuck would I use one? Anyway, so... Yeah, like I said to me, like Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, MLMs, all those other scams, all very similar, all very much the same. Investment scams to me are things like Bitcoin. And now it's time to look a pyramid at pyramid schemes that ended with their founders in jail or heavily fined. Because I like hearing about scammers ending up in jail. That makes me happy. And I'm just checking comments because my phone decided to stop being or it start being an idiot right before this stream. And I was like, I'm not messing with that today. I'm just not. All right. I'd, I am not looking at the comments on my phone today because it kept messing up on me. And then I'm scared it's going to like do something. So this first one that we're gonna take a look at, that they give us a little brief synopsis to, and we'll watch the video, is Burn Lounge, Inc. Burn Lounge, you may remember Burn Lounge, if you're old like me. <laughs> you may remember Napster. <laughs> you may remember these kind of things. Uh, there was kind of a time back in what would have been the 90s, I guess we would say, 
uh, 90s, early 2000s, around there, right? Like this one was founded in 2004. So yeah, like between the 90s and like, when did all of this become really, really illegal? Because that's the thing is that, what sweetie, I'm doing a live stream and grabbing something. What do you need? Okay, just take it. There's only a couple left in that one. Guy's going to the store. You're so weird. My daughter eats bread. She just eats bread. Uh, so she came in to get some bread. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 2004, I was in high school. That was the year that I graduated from high school. Uh, and I remember being in high school, being in late public school, of course. And they had like Burn Lounge. They had Napster. They had all of these programs where you could basically like download music uh, for for free. But it was really just all of us pirating, pirating music illegally <laughs> somehow with these applications that were created somehow in a free way. Uh, so Burn Lounge is basically one of those things, except, except on, on tight, on top of like all of the legal downloading and stuff that was going on, what they did is they offered the opportunity to, and it says here, they did it to 30,000 people, including label musicians. So the deal was simple enough. They open up a storefront through your own page, right? But unlike streaming sites like MySpace or Prettier Volume, do you guys remember MySpace? I loved my space. <laughs> Record store owners were required to pay a subscription fee. So this was kind of like, uh, you know, they opened a store via Burn Lounge and then people can kind of like go there and buy the songs and download them. So it was like a virtual record store. So... Um, those who sold the songs through the stores were paid in points that could be redeemed for Burn Lounge products only. So now this is where we get into a little bit of an issue, right? Because it'd be one thing if they just kind of provided a service where these companies could go and they could use that service to sell their songs and then make a profit off those songs. That would be completely legal. And there are lots and lots of sites like that that are even out there today. But <laughs> when they provide this service and they say, yes, and then we'll pay you for the songs. And then they're like, but in points and you can only use it in our website. It's like, wait, what? Because uh, then you're not actually making money off of the songs you're selling. You're just making points and then you have to use it on that website. Right. So it's very obviously a scam. And if you wanted to exchange your sales points for real money, you have to pay extra. So that would, of course, be their way of doing the loophole. So obviously they can't just straight out be like, oh, when we're only going to pay you in these points for burn lounge, guys, and uh, screw you if you want money. So the, instead, they'll be like, oh, you can get it in money, but it will cost you three dollars to like on the on every five dollars to exchange it or something crazy and it was probably a high fee right so ultimately the whole pay for it right to sell pay for the right to sell and earn bonuses for recruiting members caught the eyes of the ftc and earned the site a hasty shutdown order operators were ordered to pay 17 million dollars u.s to refund the consumers that got burnt. Like, literally, because they were burning music. <laughs> so, I love the FTC page. Obviously, it's where you would go to find the information on what happened when the FTC shut down a company. So, here we have that the FTC returns almost 1.9 million to consumers in burn lounge pyramid scheme. And you'll see that this was in June, 2015, that this was written.
The Federal Trade Commission is mailing 52,099 checks totaling almost $1.9 million to consumers who lost money to a pyramid scheme that pretended to be a legitimate multi-level marketing program. Yeah, one's that. Selling opportunities to operate online digital music stores. So that's a lot of checks, though. I, I mean, I don't know. I wonder what the most checks is that the FTC has ever had to mail back because of a scam. That would be interesting to look into, actually. Maybe I'll do a, we'll, we'll have to look into that. Uh, but it, it just sounds like insane, right? In June 2014, the FTC won an appeals court ruling upholding a district court finding that Burn Lounge had operated a pyramid scheme. Because that's what that is. Consumers who received the checks from the FTC's refund administrator for this matter, um, Gallardi and Co. LLC, should deposit or cash them within 60 days of the mailing date. So, um... And then, of course, they give information to call. I'm not going to read through all that because it's, this has already been handled. And everybody that was owed a check hopefully has already gotten their check by now. And I have to go grab my daughter a drink. And then when I come back, we're going to actually look at the company. One second. Mom, I... Mom life. Hey, monkey. Something else. I love that when I give you a drink, you say something healthy. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, yeah. All right. I totally didn't mute or nothing because I, I don't care. Um, and then I just climbed on my couch to get back down over here. We still good? We still good? I'm not a famous YouTuber, guys. I'm, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Hello, Christina. Nice to see you. I'm glad you could be here. Christina, everybody give a big round of applause for my amazing mod. She is awesome. And, all right. <laughs> so, Burn Lounge was a multi-level marketing online music store. So, what's funny about this is a lot of these are, like, that were considered pyramid schemes were multi-level marketing companies. And that's also kind of why I wanted to do this video today, just to show how small the gap actually is between those things, right? So it was founded in 2004 and it was based in New York City. By 2006, the company reported 30,000 members using the site to sell music through its network. In 2007, the company was sued by the FTC for being an illegal pyramid scheme. It lost the suit in 2012 and, um, and lost the appeal in 2014. And that's how long it can take to sort something like this out. In June 2015, the FTC began returning $1.9 million to people who had lost money in the scheme. The company is dormant pending additional appeals. So the reason why they're appealing is because, of course, if they're seen as a pyramid scheme, they have to completely shut down. But if they can completely convince everyone that they're really just an MLM and they're, they're not scamming people, then, of course, they can continue scamming people. So, <laughs> I mean, that's just what that is. So... <laughs> It kind of has like a, a little bit of a weird, uh, a, a, a weird 
beginning. So <laughs> its primary business was the Burn Lounge online music store. However, it also had a secondary thing, which was Orbital Publishing, which produced printed matter for the company. And you're probably like, what does that mean? And I'm like, the pamphlets, the flyers, the, like, I guess if you wanted to sell, like, burn discs, you could get them to do art. Like, I don't know. I don't know. And all of the, the terms of services for the sites and, like, that kind of thing. I don't know. But it was their own company, so... Former CEO Alex Arnold, and he <laughs> was formerly with Excel Communications and founder and former chairman of NewWorld.com, which is just like more scams. Described by Gartner G2 as a multi-level marketing company, that's how they wanted to be seen as, Burnlown used the term concentric retail to describe its business model. I have to say that's that's a new one. I don't think I've heard that one yet. Concentric retail. <laughs> the company's site allowed customers to preview and purchase music and chat through a proprietary client. Customers wishing to sell music through their own custom pages were required to purchase a subscription. Subscription costs varied and consisted of either an annual fee or an annual fee with an additional monthly charge. These fees only allowed one to redeem sales points for Burn Lounge products. Participants paid additional fees if they wished to have the money instead. A Fortune article places the commission at $0.05 cents per $0.99 cent download. It sucks. In 2006, the company stated that nearly 30,000 people had open burn lounge storefronts, including several major label musicians, which is kind of sad. The service provided content supplied by Muse with early versions of its software provided by Beatport and Social LM, I guess. Social LM, I think. Version 0.9 of the software was introduced in October 2005, and version 1.0 was unveiled in Las Vegas on June 9th and 10th, 2006. Burn Lounge, Burn Lounge offered only music downloads. But other products such as audiobooks, video, ringtones, and physical merchandise were said to be planned. Burn Lounge 2.0 launched quietly on Friday, April 27, 2007. So the FTC pyramid scheme lawsuit was basically claiming that Burn Lounge is a pyramid scheme because they pay more money for recruiting new store owners than for selling music. The lawsuit claimed that Burn Lounge made very little money from the sales music and made the vast majority of its money from independent associates named Moggles. Moggles. Like we're in Harry Potter. Paying between $29.95 and $429.95 a year plus fees for the right to sell music. The lawsuit also stated that associates were paid a cash reward for recruiting others into the program, which again, of course, is that that that's a pyramid scheme. One person named in the lawsuit, Rob DeBoer, says that he recruited about 45 other people to open their own burn lounge sites. Those recruited would then pay a commission on their sales to DeBoer, and he stated that he made almost 300,000 US from burn lounge. The result, the lawsuit is a result of a year-long investigation into Burn Lounge by the state of South Carolina. Others named in the lawsuit include former Burn Lounge CEO Alex Arnold and two Texas men who promoted Burn Lounge similarly to DeBoer. 
The case went before a federal judge on December 2008, and while many of the accusations against the company were dropped by the FTC on February 29, 2012, an order was issued banning or barring the defendants, banning, barring, whatever, from operating a pyramid scheme and ordering them to pay some $17 million in damages. And then we kind of know where it went from there. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, that uh, that's Burn Lounge. Now, Burn Lounge is just great fun. Let's see what this one has to say. It's a commercial. Sounds like a Repzilla song. See, what you guys are a part of is something that is a, a movement that's happening in business. You may not realize it, but it isn't the digital download revolution that you guys are a part of. You guys are a part of a much broader trend that is redefining the way business is done. And that is putting the power into the hands of you. I realized that we needed to come up with a solution to take advantage of this new window of opportunity, this new growth cycle of digital entertainment. Alan Locke is going. Got Willie Nelson, guys. They're buying music. You're buying music. Why on earth would you be buying it from anybody but yourself and each other? Price line, you say. Download stores of and by the people. Well, I just exposed everything I watch all day. All right, the next one we are going to take a look at because that that was their like commercial. That was funny to me. It aged like like sad milk, you know, like or like yeah, like sad milk. Yes, like Illuminati sad milk. It aged like milk. It was a uh, little bit, little bit creepy, little bit creepy. Uh, especially now that you know that they've been sued. It, it's always fun to watch those. So this is Business in Motion. And for those of you that do not know, this one, this is the one that was in Canada. Canada. Canada, BC. Thank you for being slow, computer. I just wanted to do a quick little show them it was in BC and then come back and you had to be stupid on me. So Business in Motion is, was actually a, a Canadian company. I'm Canadian, if you didn't know. So CBC Marketplace did a whole... I love CBC Marketplace. I watch it all the time. It's always been like one of my favorite things to watch. I love it. Um, then I wonder how I got into doing this. And then I look back and I'm like, Enron. I watch a lot of CBC Marketplace. I ended up in MLMs. Why wouldn't I be doing this? So they're from... British Columbia, and uh, and you might have heard of them due to it ending up on the CBC marketplace. <laughs> so, 
the, the, I love this first sentence here. Sorry, I'm like cracking up because I know what, what I'm about to say. I don't just, I can't even get through it. So a key indicator you might be embroiled in a pyramid scheme is when the name of your company has nothing to do, not a thing to do with what you're selling, which then made me laugh because I was like, it works, doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, maybe if it was, it works out or something, you know, and I started to go through like all of the company names in my head. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That's a good point. So yeah, that, that was funny to me. I just like how they uh, started, started that off. So in the midst of 2008 recession, because if you didn't know, there was a big recession back then, cash-strapped Canadians were offered a chance of making up to $100,000. Imagine being told that you can make up to $100,000. And here's the thing you have to understand is that back then they would actually say that to you. So today, it's a lot easier for us to combat these companies right now in 2021, because when they say if you didn't know, it's illegal for them to say, hey, you can make up to this amount of money. I made this much this last month and you can make it too. They're not supposed to be mentioning any money at all. All of that is considered an income claim. They are now illegal. Back then, back in 2008, you could do that. So there would be actual flyers up places because like social media was still kind of new um like not completely new but, but we weren't like using it for every single thing yeah you know what i mean so a lot of the times they they still kind of used flyers and and like television ads and like things like this to do their commercials back then and they would actually say like you can make up to a hundred thousand dollars like and you know to somebody that is in a recession, not doing well, you have a family you got to support, you know, that sounds amazing. I mean, a lot of people would look at that and go, well, I have nothing to lose here. I might as well give it a try. And they were upselling dirt cheap vacation club packages. Yes, you heard that right. This place is called Business in motion. When I say business in motion, I bet you, I bet you half the people that are watching this or will watch this in future. If you're watching the replay, love you too. Um, they, they probably thought in their brain that this was going to be one of those like business guru companies, because that's exactly what it sounds like when you hear business in motion. I'm sure one of the first things you're thinking is, oh, they probably sell one of these programs to help people do better in their business, get their business in motion, you know? But, but no, that's uh, not what they do. They sell vacation club packages. So that that always makes me laugh. I thought that was a good, good one. That was a good joke, you know? I was like, Jesus, vacation club packages. Because most people wouldn't. I'm sure you didn't think that that's what they were doing if you weren't aware of what it was already. <laughs> the catch. There was a $3,200 entrance fee for the travel club dubbed ultra life sounds like herbal life <laughs> but they would be paid a five thousand dollar commission for every package sold so a group of 2000 investors duped by the mississauga based business in motion launched Blah, 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 launched a class action lawsuit and were awarded $6.5 million. The man behind the alleged pyramid scheme, Alex Klepax, could face deportation back to the UK. Bye, Alex. I really don't care if a, a scammer who ripped off people for thousands of dollars ends up getting deported. I'm like, bye. Uh, nice having you here, Not So, of course, we have the CBC Marketplace. Now, <laughs> I can't play this because you ask, you know my ass 
will be struck if I play the CBC Marketplace. <laughs> So, of course, after the end of the stream, I am going to add the links down into the description and you can go and you can watch it. A lot of the other videos we can view on here, it's just, I don't feel like getting struck by the CBC marketplace. However, I did find this, which pretty much outlines it for us. If my computer wants to stop being stupid, thank you, computer. So, <laughs> I of course, <clears throat> sorry guys, I of course, instead of us playing the CBC Marketplace video, <laughs> so I, you know, I end up struggling. Like, why are you going down there? For crying out loud, computer, get it together. You're, you're more of a hot mess than I am. All right, so we'll read the article that outlines it. And then if you guys want, like I said, after the stream, I'll go and I'll put all the links in um, because I usually put the links in at the end of the stream, just in case as I'm going through, I decide to like click on something else, like a link or look up something else. I never really know. So I'm always like, I'll put the links in at the end. That way I know all of the links I have used for the whole stream. Um, but I did put the link in of the five famous pyramid scheme article. Uh, like when I made the stream. So that link's down there. But then I will, of course, like, so you can go click that link. You can watch it. But I'll add all of these in too. You can come check. Always check resources. So pyramid scheme victims win 6.5 million in a BC lawsuit. And of course they have it. That is their lovely little ad. It says, enjoy the ultra lifestyle. The ultra life style. The ultra lifestyle. You see what they did there? <laughs> so funny. Uh, more than 2,000 investors lost money. So a federal court judge has awarded $6.5 billion to an estimated 2,000 investors who put money into the Ultra Life Club through a Mississauga, Ontario corporation called Business in Motion International. I am from Napanee slash Kingston, Ontario. The company was run by Alan Kapax. That's not where I live now, though, by the way. So don't go, go trying to dox addresses from there, people. Just saying. The company was run by Alan Kapax. Kapax. Who was first exposed in a CBC Marketplace investigation of a pyramid scheme that defrauded investors across Canada, including hundreds from BC. People attending meetings held by Kapax were asked to pay a $3,200 entrance fee to buy vacation packages worth $9,000 they could then sell to others. You heard that right. So they had to pay and have that. Ba basically, they were paying to have the access to have the packages so that they could sell them and make a commission. You know what I mean? It's just very weird. And then they were supposed to also get people to join on with them too, to sell packages and then make commissions. And it, it was very bizarre. Okay. It, it, the whole thing was bizarre. It was a lot like an MLM, right? So it, it ran like that, but it was just, I, it's hard for me to understand like having a membership fee, I guess. And you not being like, this is a scam. I don't know. Burnaby, BC resident Mark Cusetto, Cusetto said that he just wanted access to cheap travel. Instead, he was taken for a ride, losing thousands of dollars in the pyramid scheme. Cusetto was so upset, he launched a class action lawsuit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we like him. We were all duped. I just wanted to see everybody get back what they put in. Yeah! You go. In fact, Capex's vacation packages weren't even good deals. You don't say. <laughs> there were cheaper travel packages on the internet and his business continually needed more recruits to keep profits flowing to those at the top. Exactly. A scheme that court described as a classic pyramid scheme. Yeah, because... They weren't really getting anything in return unless they sold a whole bunch of packages. Like, like I said, it was 
was a bizarre thing. Like there wasn't much that they could get out of it other than having cheap travel, which of course, as they pointed out here, wasn't even that cheap because there was cheaper travel out there. So you were basically paying for nothing. Uh, <laughs> I guess you're paying for a community of people that like to travel. Other than that, you were wasting your money. Yet, when first approached by the CBC's marketplace, Capax maintained he'd done nothing illegal. Now, he's from Toronto. This is him. He's from Toronto. Toronto, Ontario. Which is like... It, I grew up in between Toronto and Ottawa, basically. So, uh, Toronto is a couple hours away from where I grew up. He's from Toronto. Doesn't he just look... Do, it doesn't this look like the face of a dude you would trust to give all of your money to to go on vacation? No? Didn't think so. I would be a YouTuber for a minute. Put a one in the chat if you think that that guy looks trustworthy. I'd put a two. Put a two in the chat if you think that he looks not trustworthy. Yes, I'm very sorry. Hello, Marie. Hello. I am. My, yeah, my phone decided to like go all wonky on me when I went to like try to look at the comments on it. And I don't know why, but it was just like. <laughs> And I was like, okay, we're just, I'm just not going to be in there. We're just not doing that. Joseph says two, put two in the chat. If you think that you would like ever hand over your money to this guy to set you up with a vacay. And I'm not trying to be a bitch. I'm not like, don't, don't judge all the book by its cover, but we know this guy's a scammer. So let's, let's, let's just have some fun. <laughs> Um, because obviously, like, you can't look at people, and that's oftentimes the issue, is that it's not like you can look at somebody and know that they're a bad person. So, you know, I'm not saying that, but it's just funny, and I love this picture that they got of him, too, where he's just, like, he looks, like, half confused, like, you know? <laughs> so, you know. It's it's not looking good, though, for this dude being trusted. I really don't think people are going to ever trust this guy. He's just, like, again, especially now. So, uh, my fellow Canadians, uh, Alan Capax. Capax! Don't trust. That's, that's him there. If he ever comes and offers you a vacation getaway, say no. Or anything else, for that matter. He's been in a few scams now. <laughs> We don't know what the next one will be. So, um, yeah, he has had several other run-ins with the law, as I <laughs> was just kind of going into. So in 2012, he was charged with operating a grow-up, which, of course, is, a, if you don't know, is for the... <laughs> You know, and in 2010, he was found guilty of taking part in a fatal, fatal Toronto street race. So he got into a street race and somebody ended up dead and he served one year. Go Canada justice system. You're so great. Uh, yeah. So, that, that, that's a little background into him. You know, just... Again, not really someone I would want to go and buy a vacation package from. But they do a very good job of, like, scrubbing the internet of things of their past. Or of, like, at least trying to hide it. And it's not like when they start their new company, oftentimes, they'll be like, Oh, by the way, I was running another pyramid scheme that got shut down. You know what I mean? So that's how people still fall for him in this after him being that lovely person. So he is now facing deportation to Britain because he's originally from there, of course, and then came to Toronto to be a, a businessman. 
good job. Good job at that, sir. And so, so far he has been sued for this and you know, everyone wants to know where this money went because he basically just took everybody's money and I'm pretty sure he just kept it for himself and used it for his own shit. Because again, with the pyramid scheme and the MLM business practice, technically you have to keep on having the money coming in, right? Just like a pyramid scheme, MLM, same things. You gotta always have the recruits and you gotta always keep the money coming in and keep the people climbing to the top because you don't make the real money off of the customers. You make it off of the recruits, especially in something like this where you're forcing people to pay like an entire subscription to be there. So your main goal would be to get as many people as you can to pay the subscription to then be able to sell the packages. So uh, once, you know, people don't sign up anymore, or it slowly starts to die down because a lot of times these companies, when they come out, they have this huge surge in sales because they're like a brand new company. Everyone's like, oh, yay, I'm going to join. And then, you know, as the years go on, hopefully, hopefully, unless they're like fucking Amway or something, then it tends to drop off. Although we are seeing the MLMs drop, like I said in my video. So we're getting there. We're getting there. So <laughs> Alan here, lovely dude he is, he just kind of took everybody's money and then nobody knows what happened to it and now he is in crap and he has to pay back money and yeah <laughs> but it didn't go back into like the business so that's why they're like where did the money go he just kind of like bought himself a vacation home with it and yeah Getting ahead of myself here. So, on to the next one. Fortune High Tech Marketing. Should we watch the video first this time? Let's watch the video first this time, actually. A multi-level marketer that attracted some of Charlotte's best-known names apparently doesn't pay very well. One state regulator has called it a pyramid scheme. And I-team reporter Stuart Watson has new documents that show how few really profit. In hotels, arenas, churches. The Lord wanted you to be here today. Fortune high-tech marketing dangled riches. You're going to get paid $100,000 a year for doing exactly what you do today. Donna Lewis, the wife of Bank of America former CEO Ken Lewis, signed up. Introduced by her friend, Charlotte TV personality, Barbara McKay. And she said, I don't really have a need for money, but I do want to make a difference. Fortune High Tech Marketing encourages sales reps to recruit others. When you get your first three people signed up here as a business owner, you will have made $300. So there's a kind of missionary zeal in it. Meanwhile, nobody's looking at the actual results. Well, now we know some actual results thanks to this document. Posted on the company's own website, it shows almost 95% of sales reps average less than $3,000 a year. Another 4% or so average under thirty-one grand, and less than half a percent make the big bucks. And this is a best case because the company's numbers do not include almost 30% of the active sales reps who made nothing nothing at all. The Better Business Bureau in Lexington, the company's home, gives it an F. FHTM agreed to pay almost a million dollars in refunds and fines in Montana after the auditor there determined the company operated what she called a pyramid promotional scheme. Stuart Watson, News Channel 36. FHTM's marketing manager sent us an email saying its goal in releasing income statements is to make sure that sales reps, quote, realize that they will need to work hard to earn an income and success is not guaranteed. You need to work hard. It's your fault. You're just not making money because you're not working hard enough. We want your blood and your sweat and your tears. Like, Jesus Christ. So, yes, uh, I, I, I really like this video, especially because it kind of breaks down how most MLM companies are, really. Uh, although, 
now we've found out that those numbers are actually a little bit old. The number of people that don't make money in these companies is actually 99.64%. So there's that. Uh, but you know, that, that was for that one specifically and, uh, not looking good for it either, of course. So they say the name sounds legit because <laughs> fortune high tech marketing, right? Now, what would you think that fortune high tech marketing would be high tech marketing? So luckily this one's a little bit more like its name, which recruited people to sell products made by Dish Network, cell phone providers, Front Point Home Security, and then just randomly out of nowhere, they just throw in health and beauty products. You're like, what? <laughs> Okay, Dish Network, cell phone providers, front point. Okay, that's like their home security. Yeah, okay, that all makes sense. That's all tech. And then they're like, in health and beauty products. You're like, oh. And of course, that's just an example of that whole like, we have products for everyone kind of thing. They're like, we'll sell the techie stuff to the boys. <laughs> and then we'll have some makeup health and beauty products for the girls. Then we get everybody. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. So this thing was deemed a peer. Oh, sorry. I, I'm very bad for clapping near my microphone. I should never do a podcast. This thing was deemed a pyramid scheme in 2013 and shuttered. 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 Shut it. Shut, shut down by the Federal Trade Commission. I'm sorry. That just sounds so weird. Bearing all the classic marks of a pyramid scheme, salespeople made more money from recruiting than they did from selling. Every single one of these. <laughs> the FTC estimated more than 350,000 people in the U.S., Puerto Rico, and Canada bought into the scheme, paying $100 to $300 in annual fees with additional payments to get access to higher sales commissions and recruiting bonuses. The outcome, FHTM operators were banned from participating in multi-level marketing and forced to pay $7.75 million in U.S. money in assets back to consumers duped by the scheme. And this one makes me laugh because, like I said, I love how it's all tech and then it's just like, and health and beauty products. Okay, so this is a Lexington, Kentucky-based company. And of course, it is another MLM. The funny thing is that this is all about how basically a bunch of MLM companies have been caught to be pyramid schemes and then shut down. <laughs> That's what this whole, whole stream has been about. So they use the MLM business model. like, And all of these companies so far have been claiming that they use the MLM business model. The company was founded in January 2001 and in January 2013, the FTC and regular regulators of three states shut it down. Just, you're gone for being a pyramid scheme. As we just read, but in case anyone's popping in, you know. So it was founded by Thomas Mills, and this is Paul, Paul Orbertson, right here. Good old Polly. Another guy that I'm sure you just want to hand all your money to, you know. And they both previously worked with Excel Communications, and he had also worked as a high school basketball coach. He kind of looks like the high school that you could see this dude being a, a high school basketball coach, like for sure. I feel like yeah, he probably should have just kept doing that instead. <laughs> that would have been better for everybody. My man, what was you doing? Why did you leave that job? So in 2010, the company paid 1 million to settle the charges. And, uh, 
it was all because hold on i skipped something here it was all because they were selling the at&t they were selling dish sprint so they were one of those like uh third party companies if that makes sense so you would kind of like pay them for the services of the other company like at&t and sprint does that make sense? It's like a, a, a third party company that gets you to pay them and then they pay the company for you. Um, they like to lie a lot. So in 2010, they claimed that 95% of their rep representatives made less than $3,100 a year. And with 29% making nothing, but they were very well known for doing these elaborate commercials and ads about how everybody was making money. You know what I mean? So uh, once again, usual MLM pyramid scheme kind of thing where they're like, everybody's rich over here. We're all doing so well. But then you get the numbers and the earnings and you're like, no, you're not. What are you talking about? This is awful. So... Um, what happened is in 2010, the company paid a million dollars to settle charges brought by the Montana State Securities Commission, and it accused them of acting as a pyramid scheme, compensating affiliates for recruiting other affiliates rather than for selling products or services. They didn't admit to any wrongdoing, but they had to lower their entry fee from $299 to $75. The reason why I want to bring this up specifically is because there's been a lot of cases out here where you have seen an MLM company that just automatically like lowers their price. Uh, a good example of that that I can think of right off the top of my head right now is LuLaRoe. When LuLaRoe began going through all of their legal crap, uh, and they were getting sued for being a pyramid scheme. It, I remember, this was so funny to me. And I remember watching it happen. It went from $5,000 to sign up. Then they like dropped one of the zeros. So it was like 500. And then I think they even went back like down a little bit more. And it was like 299 or something at one point. And I was just sitting there like, hmm. That's funny. One of my biggest mistakes in life was signing up for It Works because they were having a sale where instead of it being $120 Canadian to sign up, it was going to be $20 Canadian to sign up. Oh, yeah. So I told myself I was getting some kind of deal. But as you see, a lot of times the reason why these companies are made to put down their price so much is not because they care about the the other distributors now they don't want to help them out they don't care about getting more customers and helping build teams or whatever it's because they have been reached with a lawsuit or they know that one might be coming soon because something's you know brewing and they've figured out that if they lower the entry fee they can actually kind of not get in as much trouble does that make sense so you'll see them do it, or they actually had this exact thing happen to them where they did face a legality and then they were told, yo, you got to lower these fees. So I just felt the need to kind of like talk about that for a minute in this video because it's something that you will see out here, especially in MLM companies. So again, if you're ever like looking at an MLM company and then all of a sudden they just drop their fee down, go do a little digging. Be like, what this company really dropping their fee down for? They're, they're not trying to be nice okay their point is to rip you off for money so when they drop their feet there's there's something else going on all right there's there's something else usually going on because again in past experience with companies dropping down just for a sale it actually doesn't work out like it works had i believe half of the distributors that they signed up in that month sale drop out by the end of the month so that's like technically not really good for their business either. And I know a lot of people talk about this a lot and they're like, I don't know why they do this. Like this has been a conversation. This is why. This is why they will do that. 
it's because they, again, they either know they're about to face legalities uh, or they did and they're told to lower the price. Um, so they lowered their entry, entry fees outside of Montana to $99. So basically, if you're in Montana, you paid 75 And if you're anywhere else, fuck you, you got to pay 99 <laughs> Isn't that great? So, uh, again, they disclosed that a lot of their representatives didn't make any money. 30%, 30 made zero, as the video said. And luckily, so far, so far, they have been completely shut down. The only thing that I wish that a lot of these FDC lawsuits would kind of stop doing is you'll notice the very, very uh, last sentence here. It says, under the settlement, the defendants neither admit nor deny that the company was a pyramid scheme. I want to see them being made to say it. I don't like this. I want them to have to do like a whole speech where they stand up and they say, yes. My company was a pyramid scheme. Yes, I was trying to rip everyone off. And then they apologized to all the people that they ripped off. That's what I want to see. I, I think that that could help us. Because th then they would have to take accountability for it. And they would have to apologize. And maybe there'd be less of a chance that they would then go and, and do another one. I don't know. I'm just saying they also owe those people that. Like, I feel like if, if you fuck over a whole bunch of people for a whole bunch of money the least you could do is admit to it when you're caught and sued for it told to shut down your business you know the least you could do for those people other than give them their money back is to take accountability and then apologize like in some kind of public apology or even in the courtroom to these people all right i feel like they deserve that they deserve that so I really wish that, you know, under these settlements that they would kind of stop doing that because it seems to be something that they offer in, do you know what I mean? Like, because, you know, a lot of the time these settlements, they it's like a give and take kind of thing and they're going back and forth in court and back and forth in court. So the, then they'll come to a the conclusion. They'll be like, okay, I'll pay back this amount of the money, but I'll only do that if I don't have to admit to what I did. And then they'll be like, okay, whatever. Well, at least we're getting something. Fight them. <laughs> be like... No, we want you to do that and admit to what you did, okay? Admit to what you did. We we need you to apologize because that's, yeah, but that's usually why that ends up happening. Getting ahead of ourselves again, queen. Don't be doing that. How's my chat doing? Hello, my amazing husband. I love you. I hope you're making videos. Just here for the dislike for this ignorant person. Says this person. They're like, this girl is doing, this girl doing a live stream on pyramid schemes that shut down. We like pyramid schemes here on YouTube. How dare she be ignorant that we like getting ripped off? What are you doing? <laughs> like, what? What? I never get why people want to attack my channel because I'm like, I'm over here talking about scams. Like, don't blame me because I took over Suits Drop. That's not my problem. So Irish Liberty Speedball Scheme. Next one. So this one is fun. This is one of the ones I can watch, right? <laughs> I'm like, hold up, hold up. Can I watch this one? I think so. I think this is one of the ones that's okay. Yes, it should be. Figure it out in a minute, I guess. <laughs> We're a nation of shoppers. It's extraordinary to think that... In Listen, The Guardian. The Guardian. Do not copyright strike me. Thank you. I don't even make money on here. It's a recession. You've only got to go down Oxford Street to see that we really love a bit of retail therapy. The problem is, though, that very few of us understand our consumer rights. It's really only when things go wrong that we get closer to understanding the law. 
Here at The Guardian, we get hundreds of emails every week from people who are at the end of their tether, having pursued all sorts of organisations to try and get redress. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what your rights are under the law at the moment, how those rights are going to be changing under new laws that are coming into force next year, what to do when something goes wrong. Do we need this right now? Hold on. Yeah, we don't need to go through the guide to our consumer rights right now. I figured we were going to learn more about the company here. So in the mid-2000s, a scam swept through Ireland. Ireland! Where people were asked to invest £10,000, around $14,000, and entice other friends to invest the money was paid to get headquarters in Germany to get around Irish tax laws. Whoa, they, they were doing like straight up money laundering, huh? Oh, woo. So investors were told they'd get 80,000 pounds when they went to Germany to collect their profits. Altogether, the scammer pulled in over $28 million off those who bought into the scheme. The pyramid scam lured enough people to inspire the Irish government to boost its laws for those behind schemes like Liberty, imposing fines up to $140,000 and prison time. So yeah, these people, they ran a straight up money laundering scheme is what that is. So they say, hey, yo, come invest with me. Come invest. And then uh, someone invests some money. And then you get your friends to invest. And they get their friends to invest. And they get their friends to invest. And we're going to send it out to Germany to some dude's house. Because it was just paid to a head <laughs> headquarters in Germany. Like, that doesn't make me feel very good at all. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll just go pick it up from there. You give us 10,000, we give you 80,000. Like if there was ever a pyramid scheme, that is, that's a pyramid scheme for sure. So this is actually one of the pyramid scams that got the Irish government to boost its laws for those behind schemes like this. Again, so I just, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, it sucks that it took a bunch of people getting ripped off for the government to be like, hey, maybe we should make these things have... Hello, sweetheart. Hi. Okay, I'm doing a live stream, though. In there. You're just going to sit right there? Okay. Please just sit right there. Thank you. So, we... <laughs> so, he literally, literally is ha just having it sent to some person's house. Yeah, and that's... And, and then, and then, and then, and then someone has to work with that. You don't know what we talking about. I love you, but but you 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 don't listen very well to to grown up speak. All right, mommy's almost done. Don't worry. Do you want to go watch your show? I want to play games after this. Okay, on here sounds good. Yeah. Okay, you gotta go back to your room though for a minute, because I can't have you sitting here being the peanut gallery for me. I love you. Okay. So, uh, no, not now. I'm not paying the Irish examiner. Okay. So pyramid scheme operators face five years in jail. This is what I could find on that. Cause again, it's Ireland. So the minister is expected to make the announcement on the get rich quick schemes as part of a new consumer protection bill. I like this, right? The bill includes 30 offenses against consumers involving unfair commercial practices, including prize draw scams, thank God, and making false claims about products or services. You know, like we have 
here in Canada and in the U.S. when it comes to MLMs. Like I said, they cannot make false income claims. They can't make false medical claims, etc. So it seems like Ireland is, this is the thing that got Ireland to jump on board with doing that as well. Those found guilty of any of the offenses apart from the pyramid schemes face fines between three thousand pounds and a hundred thousand pounds as well as prison sentence of up to two years however while the bill is aimed at tackling all aspects of consumer protection it is clear from the more severe prison terms that mr merton is specifically trying to clamp down on the pyramid scams which make up to 20 million pounds from small investors that made me sad. West Cork was one of Ireland's major hotspots for the Liberty and Speedball scheme, with members of the public investing up to 10,000 pounds. I think that's pounds. Each with the promise that they would receive 80,000 if they traveled to Germany to collect their profits. How do you say it in Germany? Is it pounds? Is it I don't remember right now. Many did enjoy a financial windfall, but hundreds lost the money invested. In preparing the bill, which will be announced today, Mr. Martin received a joint submission from Gardai in West Cork and elsewhere in the country on what they had found in their investigations of the schemes. Mm -hmm. So officers told the minister just how much they were hampered by not being able to search premises make arrests or detain people for questioning in relation to pyramid schemes under the Pyramid Selling Act 1980. All those powers are expected to be conferred on officers in the new legislation being unveiled today. So yes, they changed it and now they cannot do any more pyramid schemes in Ireland or else they get in trouble. Yay! And that was back in 2006, by the way. So it's been, it's been a while, but that was the one that got them to do that. Now, this one, I think this is our last one. And it is also one of my favorite ones. One of my favorite ones. All right. So, United Sciences of America. Oh, yeah, this is a fun one, guys. This is a fun one. So, like countless other examples of pyramid schemes, United Sciences of America ran a diversified portfolio hawking nutritional supplements. Sound familiar? Like Master Formula and Calorie Control Formula through 140,000 distributors and even included a celebrity endorsement by <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> My daughter's clapping. She has no clue who William Shatner is. She's just like, yeah. So the scheme initially developed by Dallas businessman Robert Adler and run in the 1980s. Uh, preyed on the fears of the era like AIDS and cancer, promising to protect those who took them. So this company basically used AIDS and cancer to sell their crap. And they got William Shatner, good old Willie, to help them out with that. All right. William Shatner. Oh, did you just tooties on my stream? <laughs> I love you. All right. So the, the products. Now, this company liked to go by USA. USA? Who's that? Well, USA, it usually stands for United States of America, but they made it 
United Sciences of America. You, okay, Daddy's done. Go with Daddy. So they made it United Sciences of America. They made it USA so that it would be more, I guess, patriotic sounding. Is that something that we can say that they probably did? I, f I feel like it is. Like, I I don't know. United Sciences of America. I do. I feel like they did that on purpose. I do. I, okay, I just do. I, 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 I do. I feel like it's done on purpose and... It's it is it's to see more patriotic than what it what it is because it I don't think that a patriotic company would rip off everyone I would hope not anyway so let's go through the company's press packet because this this one's like my favorite one because it's probably uh one of the bigger MLM ones here that got shut down. The company's press packet stated, at the heart of United Sciences of America Inc.'s broad-based nutrition program lies its products, four state-of-the-art nutritional formulations that are based on over 50,000 published research and clinical studies interpreted, 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 I just made a word all up all on my own, just completely brand new word, there you go, interpreted by some of the world's foremost research scientists to come up with the right amounts of nutrients to promote optimal health without any risk whatsoever of toxicity. So it basically sounds like every sound, sorry, I don't know where that voice came from, but it sounds like all of the other health and wellness MLMs out there, right? The four products were, the four products, that's it. Just four. I mean, you, you, you got to give them that, that at least they didn't like, like, I, I feel like it works and Herbalife and a lot of these health and wellness companies, they have like thousands of products. It seems like they just have an endless array of products and you're like going through and you're like, holy crap, like how many products do they need? They need a lot because no one usually is only interested to in a few products, you know, but this one had a uh, four, four products. Master Formula Vitamins, Minerals, and Antioxidants. Formula Plus, a marine lipid concentrate rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Fiber Energy Bar, containing 9 grams of fiber. You will be shitting for weeks. <laughs> Calorie Control Formula, a high fiber protein powder mixed for use as a meal substitute. Yes, a meal substitute. I'm just not even going to get into what I think about those meal substitutes right now. Okay, they, I'm, I'm not happy. A kit contained one month's supply and it cost them $100. And then they retailed for $135. Which, of course, here's the thing about these companies that I just want to point out as well. Is all these MLM companies and all these pyramid schemes, all of this sh shit. They always say our products are worth this much money. We have no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing that this kit would actually retail for $135. It's like what they do is they decide how much each product is, right? So they're like, okay, this product's 40, this one's 50, this one's 60, and this one's 52 and then they're like so now we'll sell it for $200 and we'll say it's worth $200 but we'll give them like 20 bucks off so they can buy it for 180 and we'll be like it's worth 200 like do you know what I mean and I'm like that's not how that works my man that's not how that works but that's how they do it so in 1997 the American Council on Science and Health asked 48 of its advisors to examine their formulas and complete a detailed questionnaire about one of them. All right. The advisors felt that the product formulations were irrational and that it has not been established that long-term use is safe. So that's great, right? You gotta love it when they're like, yo, yo, no, this isn't safe, but you've been selling it for many years. Good job. <sighs> so 
Those that all reviewed the master formula actually disagreed that it provided the body with the right nutrients in the right amounts to increase immunity in people whose diets contain the recommended dietary allowance of essential nutrients. And then you also have to wonder a little bit if that's also because people are taking meal replacement bars. Are they even getting their recommended dietary allowances of these essential nutrients? We <laughs> Probably not. Those who reviewed Formula Plus felt that fish oils may turn out to have value in preventing or treating various conditions, okay? But no data exists to recommend supplements for everyone over 30, as USA recommends. So, like, yeah, there's there's no nothing out there that's like, as soon as you hit 30, you better start taking them supplements uh, at all. I mean... You should probably just always take vitamins. I take a daily multivitamin. My daughter takes one. Husband. Like, that. that's good to do. But then, other than that, it's like, there's nothing where they're like, all right, if you're over 30, take this. Some who, re and definitely not take their stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, some who reviewed the calorie control formula felt that meal substitutes are useful in weight control programs when others felt they are not. Two advisors who commented on the Fiber Energy Bar did not believe that daily long-term use would be beneficial, while the others said that insufficient data are available to evaluate the product, which isn't good either, by the way. So they got into a lot of trouble for not having the best products. In 1986, they got a letter saying that its products are not effective in the cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of any diseases. You know, like AIDS or cancer. William Shatner. The agency said that claims of this type in its videotapes that's how old we are. Videotapes. Does anyone remember video cassette tapes? Made the products new drugs that are illegal to sell in interstate commerce because they lack FDA approval. In addition, all of the product labels were defective in other ways. Yay. Lovely. January 1987, they petitioned in federal court for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, listing total assets of $7,300,000 and liabilities of $8,600,000. The purpose of this type of bankruptcy is to stave off creditors to give the company time to restructure its indebtedness with the hope of remaining in business. The petition named Robert Adler as sole shareholder and director of USA Inc. and Jerry Leonard's law firm as its eighth largest unsecured creditor with $121,379.69 owed. No official sales figures were released, but press reports suggested that USA's 1986 gross income totaled $60 million. And then, on January 28th, the Attorneys General of Tex Texas, New York, and California filed suit in their respective states, char charging that USA Inc. had made improper claims for their products, and that their sales plan, so their entire business model, basically, constituted an illegal pyramid scheme, right? Right? It did, okay. In addition, the Texas suit charged that USA, which again, USA is the acronym for <laughs> United Sciences of America. It is not the country. Uh, that they, their distributors were not paid commissions owed by the company, so they basically were also screwing over all of their distributors for money. And... Um, Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, they, they were taken on by the same person, the Attorney General, Albert N. Sheld Sheldon, 
who successfully prosecuted Herbalife. We like him too. So on February 5th, the District Court of Dallas County issued a temporary injunction based on an agreement between the company and Texas Attorney General. In terms barred the company from marketing any current products without sending or a correction letter acceptable to the Attorney General to all distributors. Shipping any products unless accompanied by an acceptable disclosure statement that they are not for the prevention or treatment of a disease like AIDS or cancer. Right, William Shatner? Representing that USA's products have any effect in infectious and parasitic disease tumors. Endocrine. Endocrine, sorry, I'm definitely saying that wrong. Nutritional and metabolic diseases and immunity disorders, including AIDS. All right? Diseases of the blood, mental disorders, diseases of the nervous, circulatory, respiratory, digestive, genitur genitourinary, genitourinary. That's a fun way of putting it. Or musculoskeletal systems. Whose idea was it for me to do YouTube with a speech impediment? Ugh. Complications of pregnancy of or childbirth. Birth defects. Injury or poisoning. Or ill-defined conditions. Which, by the way, this company had claimed to have solved or be able to help with all of the above at some point. And remember that during the 80s was the time when everyone was really scared of AIDS. And so think of this company being something that comes out in the 80s. And they're like, we can help prevent AIDS. Gross. It's, it's just like how when we had this pandemic here with the virus. Uh, a bunch of companies were like, we can help prevent the virus. And it was like, no, go away. Stop doing this. Um, so yeah, they made all of those illegal medical claims at one point, And basically they're like, stop doing this. You're not allowed to do this. Shut the fuck up. You don't help with any of these things. They also are not allowed to manufacture any food products without being registered. And that's the other thing is that uh, they seem to forget out here that food products are supposed to be approved by the FDA. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're making like nutritional bars and stuff like that, that should also be approved by the FDA. I'm just saying selling products through a multi level distributorship. You will no longer be an MLM. And they sold the company. Uh, and then shortly after selling the company, basically, they they didn't really stop in anything. They just kept kind of running the company as it, it always ran. Not much happened. Not much happened with that. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, they did fraudulent scientific claims and deceptive advertising. That's what it, it would have been considered in the courts, especially at that time. And uh, <laughs> they actually were bouncing the checks of the distributors. So imagine you're a distributor for one of these companies and you go to get your like paycheck and it bounces at the bank. That was happening. So, luckily, uh, they ceased operation because they got a Chapter 7 bankruptcy liquidation. And then they were told to pay back the money. And this all went on between 1986-1987-1989. No, no, yeah, it says 1987, yeah. No, oh, they just projected sales for that long. That's what it was. So 1986 to 1987, they did all that. I was born in 1986. So yeah, it's an older story, but this is one of my favorite ones, especially since they're like, and William Shatner. I wonder if we could find 
William Shatner endorsing it. Should we try and look for that? Would that be fun? I wonder if we could find his, like... I still just want to make fun of William Shatner for a minute here. William! William! Hello, computer. William Shatner. I bet you I could just do this and it would, like, pop up or something. So that, that happens all the time. Well, I mean, that would be kind of funny to watch. Uh, uh, pillowcases, uh, uh, Come on, you uh, dummy, get uh, over here! Uh, uh, things around the pool! Um, uh, uh, a cereal, a toast, it's, 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 it's food for breakfast! Uh, 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 a pillow, a pillow, it's, it's things for the better! Uh, 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 an iris, parts of an eye! Uh, uh, a oh my god, oh my god! You're hopeless. <laughs> oh, it's therapeutic. William Shatner can't win pyramid by himself. So instead he went and promoted a pyramid scheme. <laughs> that was fun. That one was fun. I don't know if I'll be able to find. I don't know if anyone would have it. Oh, William. Oh, William. William Shatner, everybody. Try Montreal's local tab now on CBC News app. His battle with loneliness? I don't care about that. Why is my ad blocker not working? Someone could maybe help me with that. That would Actor be William Shatner rose. Okay, I don't want to play all of her. Was almost left after. Here in the movie, Shatner allegedly had Nimoy filmed with... Is that all the jagged stuff on your clothing that makes you melt into the background? That's the only cameo I know. Shatner responded to Abrams with a video claiming he was never contacted. Uh, JJ, I'm going to tell him personally. Okay, JJ, nobody ever came to me and said, we have a cameo. Okay. Shatner eventually became a big fan of Chris Pine on a time and almost everything on the CW. Where Shatner really goes off the deep end is shipping or placing two characters oh, no. to focus on specific people whose tweets he didn't like. Yeah, Sh Shatner um, has lost his mind on Twitter. Some Someone needs to go and, and get him somehow. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for it. I have a feeling I'll be able to find it eventually. Somebody might send it to me. We might be able to have it sent. Yeah, because that would be really fun if we could actually go through that. That would be really fun. I'll try and find it. Uh, the the lovely Internet Wayback Machine usually has a lot of stuff that I can find that uh, people think disappear, but they, it doesn't. So I'm probably going to look and see if I can find William Shatner's amazing, amazing promo of that. Might be able to. I don't know. I'll try because I don't think it would have been on the internet. That's the hard thing about things that happen before internet time is some of it doesn't make it on the internet. So hopefully, hopefully I can find it. Uh, but yeah, poor William Shatner is, is a mess. He's been going crazy on Twitter for a while, getting into arguments with, like, Illuminati and shit. I don't know what's going on, okay? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, he uh, definitely promoted that last one, which was shut down within a year, which is pretty quick. I feel like that that one was, like, a, a, it opened up, had William Shatner promote it, ripped off a bunch of people, and then got shut down. You know, <laughs> this is just kind of funny to me. I was like, oh, that's funny. And then it reminded me of... Uh, you know, it works or, or herbal life or something. 
So guys, I've been on here for a while. I think this is a decent little stream. Uh, I hope that you guys had fun sitting here and going through those pyramid schemes that are shut down. If you have any schemes, scams, pyramids, MLMs, whatever else to send me, go ahead and send it to me. I always have links in the description in the down below area. I know you know where it is because you do YouTube. You're here, you're watching. You know, we all say it. It's down there. So you can get a hold of me on social media. I also have my email, which is always on my channel that you can get a hold of me of. And I think that uh, this next week, I want to be deep diving into some more scam things and also into, uh, into some flatter stuff. Flat Earth has been really fun lately, so I think I'm going to be diving into some of that. And I really want to get my witch, my witches, uh, pseudoscience and cults out. I'm just kind of scared to get it out right now because I know as soon as I release that, I'm going to have like all of the internet witches back going. <laughs> and I just don't want that because I don't have anything against them. I just don't believe in magic myself and then I was gonna do a deep dive into the Salem witch trials and all that so that's uh kind of on the back burner make sure that you check out the video that I uploaded yesterday it is featuring Monica Hayworth and we talk about Lavelle as well as the Chris Watts case so I am also putting together a part two of that where we are actually going to go through a lot of the product ingredients and talk about you know, like how safe those products are because there's been a lot of talk that they aren't safe. So that might be kind of fun to do. So I'm hoping to have that. Uh, yeah, I got to find my broom. I got to find my broom so that I can fly away from all of the crazy witches that will come and troll me underneath my video. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to be doing that this next week. And we're going to be talking about a lot of scams and actually a very specific scam next Saturday in a live stream that I'm hoping to be able to do at the same time that I did this one. I'm going to try and do a live stream every single Saturday if I can. Of course, I might not be able to always commit to that depending on family stuff. As you know, my family always comes first, but so like the summertime might be a little bit hard for me to like always commit, but I'll, if I can't come on like in the afternoon, I can do like an evening stream or something. We'll work something out. So I'm going to try to do a stream every Saturday. And then I'm going to try to upload a video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday like I have been. And that's just kind of what's coming up. I also have not forgotten about my giveaway, by the way. The giveaway is still happening. I am just waiting again for some heat to die down. I don't want to give it away to any trolls. And apparently... Our delivery service has now been messed up. I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah, um, even my husband ordered some stuff and then thought he wasn't going to get it. So he like got a refund because it had been so long. And then it showed up. He was like, oh, so the company was like, no, that's okay. You can just. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. The mail has been weird here. So I'm still like trying to figure all that out but I definitely want to do that soon and uh yeah I think that's all I have to say don't get scammed stay away from pyramid schemes remember reverse funnel system is not a thing and uh yeah no matter where you are or what you're doing I hope that you have a fabulous fabulous day take care and I will see you on Monday because I don't like to do much on Sunday other than lay in bed with my family. <laughs> Bye! Have a good one, guys.